Today, vamos a México. Good morning to wherever you are. This is your job, man. And today we are going to go around the world and we are landing in the wonderful toasty country of Mexico. Now, in order to start with some of the history of Mexico, we're going to have to back up and go into the, about the 1700s when the Spaniards landed there and started just taking over. Now, in terms of coffee commercial growth, this didn't really happen until a little bit later when the Germans and the Italians came by, coming up through Me Guatemala and the southern border, which kind of explains why most of the coffee, some of the big coffee plantations, are found in Oaxaca and Chiapas, which just happen to be in the southern border of Mexico, kind of near more Guatemala. Now the coffee bug didn't really settle in in Mexico until about the 1800s after they got their independence from Spain. Woohoo! Independence! Now throw in a Mexican Revolution about a century later and some of the smaller farmers we're starting to really buy into this whole coffee thing. They were thinking, hey, we're free to do whatever we want. Let's try to make some money and do this coffee thing. Now this is where the politics in coffee come in, which who knew politics and coffee would be a thing, right? So starting in the 1970s, they had this government agency called the Indy Cafe, which kind of helped with regulating prices, exports, keeping, you know, the prices to where it's profitable for. Go back about a decade later to the 1960s where the International Coffee Agreement, ICA, however you want to call it, uh, started helping with the whole regulation of coffee, then we've got a pretty stable coffee environment here in Mexico. As a matter of fact, it's not just stable, it's growing pretty stinking rapidly and does so all the way up until about 1989. What happened in 1989, the International Coffee Agreement with just terrible managing just got taken out and with that they realized oh crud we have all this coffee and we don't have any way to really regulate the price so the price kind of just plummets down to the bottomless pit and coffee drops significantly in price in Mexico. As a matter of fact it dropped so bad from 1985 to 1991 the price of exported coffee drops 500 million bucks. But all you Mexican coffee lovers, do not fret. The In Me Cafe agency got some co-ops together and they realized, okay, look, we need to stabilize this sucker out. Otherwise, we are in some serious, serious trouble. So as of recently, they've got these co-ops to where they can kind of help regulate the prices and the exports. So things seem to be, as of late, stabling out in the Mexican coffee economy. So good job, guys. Let's say you're going to go to Mexico and you're like, hey, I want some cafe. Well, first thing you're going to notice, they're not really huge on coffee. They do have some coffee drinks, but the most common one and most popular I've noticed, at least here in the States anyways, is Nescafe, which is like a instant coffee. If that's your thing, hey, have at it. It's not really a Java man's thing. He's kind of wanting to go to a coffee shop and get some tasty. So here's two types of drinks you could get if you are going to a... Mexican cafe and ordering some coffee. The first drink we have is your cafe con leche. Now this is your coffee with like steamed milk. So some of the older old school kind of coffee places will do just coffee with steamed milk. Some of these newer cafes are gonna be doing espresso with steamed milk. So they're kind of going more of the latte kind of feel with it. Now the second type of drink we have is a cafe de olla. Now this is pretty interesting. This is what speaks to me as all Mexican coffee. What they have is this big old clay urn or pitch or something they bring some dark roast coffee in. They get this, they pour it through some cheesecloth, some sort of filter paper, and sweeten it with something called Bianquillo. Now what Bianquillo is, is this unrefined cane sugar, a very common sweetener down there in Mexico. If you want to think about it as like a unrefined brown sugar, that's kind of what we're working with. They pop in a cinnamon stick and bam, cafe de olla. Well, I think that's gonna have to wrap up this coffee around the world. If you enjoyed it, just throw a like. If you want a country you want me to go to, throw one down in the comments below. If you want me to grind up some bratwursts and put it in as a puree into some coffee and say, hey, try that as a coffee creamer. Throw it on down below and hey, 
Let's go broke some love for somebody.